Hi there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Melissa Gay Monster. Mm, yes, that is Monster. Our name is actually Gam Monster. And this is um, a th Adam's Family themed thing, Bloody Orb. This is a collaboration piece that I made for the Dragons in Dresses Consortium uh, for Halloween Horror. Um, so I had to use a recycled piece, which is this orb. Uh, it used to be a, pl uh, it's a plastic uh, Christmas bauble, and it got messed up from a previous project. So I had to, to cut that top off and uh, sand it down. And so I grab a piece of acetate, and we draw a circle to cut out. So we're going to use the Jade Diction UV Resin and some baby oil for this project and just a bottle of water to make blood from. Of course, we're going to have to have a UV lamp. I've got two of them, a handheld and a larger lamp to use. So we're going to cut the acetate circle out. We're going to use this to seal off our bloody orb. Once the acetate is cut, we just set that to the side. So we're going to have a food dye that we're going to use, just the red. Grab that bottle of water, squirt some into it to make a lovely bloody shade. Squeeze. So pretty. Shake it up, make sure it gets mixed really well. See, pretty red. Nice blood. Got to peel the protective cover off of the acetate and use an alcohol wipe to try and get uh, the permanent marker off of it. I use alcohol wipes to get the permanent marker off. I love those alcohol wipes. So now that we have the acetate clean, we just set it aside so we can start filling up our orb. First, you're going to use the baby oil and fill it up about a quarter of the way. It, you know, everybody's got their own taste as to how much they want from the oil to the blood. You know, if you're making a lava lamp, it could be a different color, whatever. But I want a lot of blood. So I only went with, you know, a bit of baby oil. Fill it up with the blood now. I should have used distilled water and forgot. So next time, hopefully, I'll remember. So once we get the blood in, we're going to add Thing and Thing's weapons. I think these are cute little knives that I found. They seem appropriate for Thing. He likes to chop things off, after all. So there goes one knife. And there goes the second knife. And now we got to wrestle Thing in there. It takes two hands to get Thing to do anything you want. So, put him in. Get in there, thing. Get in there. There you go. Now you're with it. Your knives. So we top the blood off, and then we're going to start putting UV resin around the top to put the acetate on. And I messed up. I don't know why I did it this way, but I did. So... Putting in the rest of the blood, filling it up, just leaving a little gap there so that it'll have an air bubble. Let me grab the UV resin and grab my torch. And for some reason, I just put a little bit of UV resin on there, just a little place, and then put the acetate on it. And I should have put it all the way around. So we're going to cure it. And then I realize, mm, yep, yeah, that's not going to work right. 
So I ended up having to take it off, clean everything up, and I'll cut all of that out because y'all don't need to see all of that cleanup that I had to do. As I still tried to put some UV on there and it's, nope, it's not working. All right, so take it off, clean it up. Now we're back to putting it all the way around. Put on the acetate. And then we're going to cure it with the handheld lamp. Once we get the handheld lamp to cure it securely, securely enough, we can test it for leaks. If there's any kind of leaks at that point, then we can put more UV resin onto it and, you know, try and stop the leaking. So I'm cleaning up the sides where UV resin had dripped down. Testing it. All right. Three, mon three minutes under the big UV lamp. I had to prop it up with a mold. So after three minutes, take it out. Double check it. Make sure there's no dripping. Don't want any leaks. Put the pink mat down thinking it might be able to see things better. I don't know why it, you know, the things that we do. So it's time to mix resin up. I am using J Diction's high gloss resin. And I think I made up a total of four ounces for this first pour. I used my resiners double paddle auto mixer. Um, and... We're going to put it into the resiners bubbleless machine now to remove some bubbles if we can. Um, I ran it for nine minutes, but I think I should have run it a second time to get out more bubbles. But, you know, hindsight being perfect and all. So, let's get the machine set for nine minutes. There we go. Come back, take it out of the machine. Really should have run it for a second time. See all those bubbles that are still there? Sad. Anyway, time to pour resin. Slowly pour it into the skull. Spritz it a little bit with alcohol, hopefully to try and get rid of some of those bubbles. And I'm off camera. I swear. I'm never going to be on camera. It's what it feels like. <laughs> it does get better, I promise. So it's time to put the orb in. Now we want to make sure when you're putting the orb in that you don't dislodge what you've sealed with the UV resin. And that is very easy to do. And you want to make sure that there's plenty of resin between the skull mold and the side of your orb. So that's why I'm pouring it right there. And I'm going to squish it, squish it around a bit, just to make sure there's no air bubbles that are down in there. Because that really sucks when that happens. And then you got to try and correct it with UV resin. It never looks right. So, yeah, just do it the first time. Make sure there's no bubbles. Finish pouring the resin in. I do pour a second layer a few hours later, but you don't get to see that because if you can't tell from before, my camera is glitching. Don't know what's wrong with it. My camera ends up dying later. But so once we get all the resin out of the cup, it will be time to make the platform that this skull is going to sit on. <sighs> time to go mess up again. So. We're using J Diction. Let's see, that's Let's Resin UV Dye uh, Maker Flow Glow in the Dark Ice Chips. And it's still the uh, J Diction UV resin that we're going to be using here. So, my thought was I wanted to make the like a stand for the skull to sit on, like bloody rocks, you know. I had a clear. Uh, silicon mat to put over this glass base because I didn't want it to stick to the glass base. Guess what I forgot to put down? So we're mixing up the 
red UV resin off camera because I cannot get in the center of the shot. So once we get that mixed up really well, just in a little bit of cup, I'm going to lay out some of the glow-in-the-dark ice crystals there just to look like rocks. Just, you know, put a handful down and see what it looks like. There we go. Pour out some, put them into a mound. And then we're going to pour that bloody UV resin onto these ice crystals. And I'm going to use the handheld UV torch. Torch. Been watching too many UK shows. Flashlight! UV light! <laughs> We're going to use that UV light to cure it. Just enough to set it. Not enough to fully cure it. Just so that it doesn't move. So we can make sure, you know, it's going to be in the positions that we want it to be in. So, cure, cure, cure. So I'm going to make up some more resin because it's not bloody enough. And pour that onto the rocks and cure that again. Oh, forgot. we got to put some more rocks on there. Not quite happy with how tall it is. So then I'm going to make up some more of the red UV resin. The red, uh, the, the dyes from that company, from Less Resin, those are, the UV dyes are really good. They really give you good depth of color. So, here we go. I'm realizing, oh yeah, I need to kind of move it into the camera view. Hooray! Now you can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> so, pour the resin onto the rocks. It's starting to get bloody enough. Maybe not. Make up some more blood. I mean, it's it's was the main component that we needed. We needed to make sure that we had blood. So I'm curing a little bit just to set this last pour. Then I'm going to make some more. Pour it on there. You get the idea? We want this to be really bloody. Cure, cure, cure. Here in a minute, I'm going to be breaking out the big lamp. Because this little lamp only does so much, you know, like only sets a little bit. And we want to have a really good, solid cure. Even after I finished this project, I had to go back and cure it two more times. Just because it would leak just a little bit of resin. So it wasn't getting all the way into the center of it. So here we go. Let's pour some more blood. I wanted to try and cure it while it was on top so that it didn't run all the way down. So I'm trying to just like, you know, freeze it in place right there. Freeze it. Okay, we're about done there. Here we go. Squeeze a little bit more blood out. That one rock there just doesn't have anything on it. There we go. Now it's got a little bit of blood on it. I am not a neat crafter. I am definitely a messy crafter. <laughs> Ask my husband. He suffers from it daily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just scrape out what little blood we've got left in this little container. And then we're going to pop it under the big lamp. That's the big double side lamp, but it's not going to fit. So i got to cure one side and then cure the other side. Oh, man, I can't believe I forgot to put that silicon mat down. All right, so cure it, cure it, cure it. Got that side cured. Now let's cure the underside. All 
All right, so that is now cured. Well, I think it is cured. As I said, I had to go back later and cure it some more because it just kept leaking out. So, all right, now we got to put this skull on here and take me a minute to figure out. Oh, yeah, this, this is the point where I realized, oh, yeah. I forgot to put that on there, and, and it's now adhered to glass, so yay. <laughs> oh, so we got to figure out how we're going to adhere this skull onto this mound. But that's after we demold. I cannot demold most anything without pushing it up against my stomach, you know? It just can't seem to. So I start. I got it started uh, demolding off camera. Came back. I'll let you see a little bit of me trying to struggle to get it out. So then we got it onto the thing, onto the mound of bloody rocks, and I found one of the the original orbs that what what it was I used is this kind of orb here. That's what's in there, but it had um, gotten broken. The stem. And that's why I ended up uh, cutting that stem off, sanding it down and recycling it for this piece. At this point, the camera has died. So I ended up using some epoxy, epoxy sculpt clay to adhere the skull to the mound of bloody rocks that glow in the dark. Um, pretty happy with it. It You can't really t see the skull, the, the clay, the epoxy sculpt clay. Um, I do a, no, the next shot, it actually shows, you can just see a little bit of pink, I think, inside of it right there. But that's all. Um, not even from the bottom. You can't even see it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I forgot to get a glow-in-the-dark shot. Sorry. I'll try and put a picture in here at the end. Um, so while I've got it on here, thank you um, for watching, like, and subscribe, and be sure to watch all the rest of the uh, videos in the collaboration. Thank you, thank you, thank you.